Hey guys, today I'm going to go ahead and make a legal and logical argument of why Magic the Gathering is gambling. I'm going to use the most recent set, Masters 25, to make this argument. Uh, feel free to disagree in the comments, but overall I do feel like this is a strong argument. So people who play Magic and people who don't play Magic, when they look at Magic the Gathering, they see that you can pay a fixed rate to get a random selection of cards, which can range in value of several cents to hundreds of dollars. This is very true in the Masters 25. You have Tree of Redemption at about $2, if we give it that. And then you have on the higher end, Imperial Recruiter and Jace the Mind Sculptor, Jace being at over 100 right now. So it does seem to be a little bit like a lottery. Uh, it's also kind of like a slot machine uh, because paying more money gives you the potential to win more money. And it is unregulated. Therefore, is it gambling? Now, Wizard of Coast has never officially recognized the secondary market. If they were to recognize the secondary market and say, okay, Jace is $100 and this uh, Tree of Redemption is a dollar. Depending on what country you live in, that is gambling. However, they are really aware. It would be... It would be foolish of us to believe that they didn't understand that unbanning Jace would make him $100 and they should put Jace in this product again, although he was just in the Eternal Masters. So is Magic the Gathering gambling? I'm, I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, the one of the collectability, the value, the intrinsic financial value of these cards, there's no difference between printing a JC Mind Sculptor to Wizard of the Coast and printing a Tree of Perdition. The difference lies in the gamble. So opening a booster pack, their Wizard of the Coast, I'm gonna address their main argument here. Opening a booster pack isn't gambling, because they, you don't hope to sell the contents of it. You're just hoping there's a secondary level where you can use the card, you can use it to go to FNM, you can use it to go to different events, uh, GPs. So maybe you're opening the pack not to resell, but you're opening the pack to play with the card. That is a reasonable argument Secondly, GPs, uh, cash prizes. In different countries like Germany, uh, any tournament with a cash prize is considered gambling. And that is why Wizard of the Coast does not have GPs in certain countries, including Germany. Uh, you have to be 18 or over to gamble. Not only is opening a booster pack could you could argue that's gambling but going to a gp event so yes i understand there is skill but there is a cast prize very similar to poker and somehow it's not regulated somehow it is not i think it's because people in the legal realm do not understand magic the gathering if you said poker if you said Let's go to a convention center in the middle of Houston and let's have a giant poker tournament. You would be regulated into oblivion. But if you said, hey, let's go and have a magic tournament, no one would even blink an eye. They would be like, okay, cool. So gambling is actually twofold. So I have a if, this, then that, and I also have my secondary argument, which is GPs are a form of gambling. I'm gonna use GPs and not FNMs because GPs actually offer prizes, cash prizes. So gambling to me is when you ha use money to try to win more money, but the majority of people win less money. It's quite interesting to view Magic as a collectible card game 
in the very beginning of magic we had anti anti was you everyone was playing for another card and if you look at the oldest cards in magic some of the most powerful cards including contract of the blow from the blow which allows you to draw seven new cards for one black some of the most powerful cards in magic have to do with anti and anti is absolutely gambling at that point in time so just like internet law, Facebook law, social media law is a little behind in the times, we don't have much case law. We don't have many cases go to litigation. Although Congress people are now interested in the loot crate after the battle, Star Wars Battlefront 2 and that debacle. It is fascinating. Um, it is incredible because somehow during the old age of ante, they never got hit for gambling. And today, when you have cast prizes, and yes, just like poker, you can be the most skilled magic player and still lose to someone who gets lucky. So poker, I would say, has as much skill as Magic the Gathering. And Magic the Gathering, when you look at Miracles decks, you look at combo decks, a lot of this is based on chance. The reason I feel like Alexandra Haynes is so famous, he played that Miracle deck, but so did half the field. So somebody was going to hit Miracle after Miracle and win the GP. It wasn't skill. Yes, you had to set it up, you had to do it, but a lot of it was dependent on your top of your deck because that's the whole concept of that entire standard deck. In combo decks, if you could... Yu-Gi-Oh! and Heart of the Cards every time you would play a deck in Modern that what used to be called Bloom, what was it? It was the combo deck Amulet Bloom. And with the right seven cards in your hand, you win the game. There would be no game. The game is over. Amulet Bloom. How much skill does that have? Well, if you're a cheater, it probably has a lot of skill because you got to win. So there's been a bit big debate, and the reason this debate is very important is it could regulate Magic the Gathering. Uh, Magic the Gathering is random. You hope when you open a pack, no one hopes to get the Tree of Perdition. Everyone hopes to get the JSD Mind Sculptor. It has the same gut feeling as scratching a lottery ticket. And if you are to be honest with yourself, that's what you're doing. I open packs to get that gambling feeling, uh, even if I know I'm going to lose. The randomness the of a pack. So let me side, let me go to the tree of redemption point. How the blank is this card in this set? It is a $10, it is just one of the Oh, Tree of Redemption, not Tree of, I think I was talking about Tree of Perdition. They're both kind of the same. People say that cracking packs is like playing the lottery. They say that anteing is gambling, and we still have ante in our card game because ante is actually on the cards. So if you wanted to play ante, you would be, Wizard of the Coast would be promoting you to play it because they are creating cards that are insanely powerful as long as you anti another card and gps cast prizes based on luck some combination of luck and skill for a very long time the magic the gathering has on the anti front on the gp front and on the booster pack front maybe you don't win every case maybe you don't win every argument on it but i would be surprised if you lost all three of them it's a percentage game. Maybe you lose, okay, booster packs are not, not gambling because you can intrinsically use the booster packs. Maybe, but loot crates, right? Loot crates are being talked about right now. And I would be very fascinated to see whether or not we, we get a, a case. I mean, a loot crate, crate, like it might not be even Magic the Gathering. It might be 
video games that set the case law, and then that case law is applied to booster packs. Uh, you might also say, hmm, will this affect Pokemon? Will this affect Yu-Gi-Oh? Will this affect other card games? More or less, but they don't really have cast prizes. To my understanding, like the Yu-Gi-Oh, like maybe ARG has cast prizes, but it's really just they give you prize cards. Kind of like the judge system, which I'll talk about in another time. I think the judge system where they're, they are, quote, volunteers controlled by the organ. You can't be... Okay, you can be a volunteer at a food bank, and the food bank can tell you what to do. But the food bank doesn't give you packets of food to take home with you. And if we remove these judge promos, how many of the judges would actually still be a judge? And I know all the judges, including Jacob, are saying, no, we love the game. We do it for... The liability is solely on the judge in the store. Um, they are very clear on that, and that's what every single move has been. It's been to push liability on... If you don't see that, let me tell you what that means. When liability is on an individual instead of a company, if something bad happens, let's say that you're a judge and you're doing your job and you have angry people and you get punched in the face... Guess who pays for it? Either you or the store. Wizard of Coast is not involved at all, but you were doing your job. As we get more and more divided, I do feel like that this is a scenario that would happen where people argue, people get angry. All right, let's say that you're a judge, you're a female judge, and you get harassed. You cannot... you. Wizard of Coast, the last thing Wizard of Coast wants to do for you, female magic player, is for you to sue them because they have the deepest pockets. And law school, the first thing you learn is always go after the plaintiff, always go after the defendant with the deepest pockets, which would not be your local game store, probably not the guy who's harassing you. It's Wizards of the Coast. They have the money. They have the billions of dollars. A lawsuit that you would win against Wizards of the Coast is worth probably 10,000 times the lawsuit that you can win against a store. And that is why Wizards of the Coast does everything they can do to protect themselves. But that's another. I'm going to try to stay on this topic. I don't need to win every argument. I just need to win one to prove that Magic the Gathering is gambling. And what does that mean? That means in certain countries, there's the age restriction. Germany has already enforced this. That's why there's no GPs in Germany, I believe. Uh, you have different countries with different uh, laws and even different states with different laws about what gambling is and how... I, I remember like Alabama or Georgia or some Louisiana, they have these calling cards that no one wants, but it actually is a lottery ticket. So people are buying these cards for minutes, which again, most cell phone programs are unlimited right now, but really it's just a disguise to sell lottery tickets to get around gambling restrictions. Here we have a, a company that has done its best to ignore or not. I'm positive they understand the secondary market. If they were to admit that, it would be almost game over. If they were to say, hey, we know some cards are $100 and we know some cards are $1 and your odds of pulling the $100 card is the same as pulling a $1 card, we wish everyone the best of luck. If they were to do a marketing campaign saying that, oh, open some magic cards, make some money, we would have a big issue. So they avoid the whole secondary market discussion, but do you really feel like they don't know that it exists? The master set is kind of the the clear, the clear most clear indicator, especially with the Jace, when they unban the Jace. If they don't unban Jace and Jace is still a $60 card, does anyone even buy the set? I mean, look at the price chart. Half the, card, half the Mythics are under 8 bucks. Outside of Imperial Recruiter and Chalice, you don't have anything over 50 If Jace is not unbanned does the set sell as well as it's going to do when it is banned absolutely not so they understand that they're money 
They understand money. That's why they unbanned it right before they announced that Jace would be in the set. There's a lot of gray areas that Wizard and Coast engages in and no one ever addresses it because, you know, I think it's logical and it's legal that there's no case law. There's no case law. Is a GP with cast events, is that gambling for magic? If you held the same scenario and instead you made a giant poker tournament, we would all say, yeah, that's gambling. Is a loot crate gambling? I would say a lot of senators are asking that question now. If a loot crate is gambling, like Hearthstone, then is perhaps Magic Packs gambling? Maybe, depends. We'll see the shakeup on that. And the last and most important, and the most compelling case I have is when I was playing Magic as a elementary school child, the majority of the strongest cards in Magic talked about this ante. If I put up a card and you put up a card and the winner of this game gets to keep the opponent's card, is that gambling? And you might pick, oh, well, they got rid of Ante. No, it's still on the card. It's a part of magic history. Some of the most powerful cards in magic history, they all say Ante on them. So if you wanted to play the game with Ante today, you, you are encouraged to do so because you have very powerful cards that allow you to play that way. Now, culturally, we have shifted from playing Ante because I'm sure Wizard of Coast realized that is bad. The next topic I really want to address is the judge relationship. The more I think about this, I'm thinking about this in this video, it just doesn't make any sense how you can employ somebody, give them a packet of cards that have a known value, a known buy list value that people take to the vendors immediately after. And if you didn't give them this pack of cards or the Teresa Nielsen lands and things of that nature, I think the majority of them are not going to be judges. Unless, of course, they are, you know, predators of some type. Um, you don't need to, you don't need to give those judge promos to predators. They're just, uh, you don't need to pay them. They're, they're, they're going to already be there <laughs> anyway. So this is my argument of why Magic the Gathering is gambling. It's a free part argument. Please don't just attack one argument. I would, you know, when you're a plaintiff, you can put up a bunch of claims and all you need is one claim to win. That's a common legal strategy is I'm going to put down every single claim that I possibly could win under. And then hopefully the judge will see one of them and like one of them better than the other two. And all I need to do is win on one. Winning on all three is great, but I would say the anti one is the strongest, that the anti is still on magic cards. And in the past, magic has been gambling. You you were supposed to play with anti. That was part of the game. You could anti up your black lotus and lose it to a basic forest. If that's not gambling, you know, with your I mean if your palms are like getting sweaty after that. You got to play like a full play set of contract of the blow, of course, because at that point, you know, you, you, you cannot lose. Anyway, that's it. Bye, guys.